If you create websites with WordPress and with Elementor, have you ever wondered how to make your text content look more organized? So let me show you an example. Here on this page, it doesn't look really good because the first block is really long, then the second block is a bit shorter, and the third block is a bit longer than the second block. But it doesn't look really good. So how do you go from this to this? Let's find out. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist. And today we're going to take a look at how you can make your text content on your Elementor website more organized. Now, as usual, many roads lead to Rome and there are actually many ways you can achieve this. But I'm going to show you a nice little plugin and I like the way it handles it and I'm going to show you why. So let's hop onto the computer. And the plugin we're going to get, it's called Jetrix and it's from Crocoblock. If you know anything about my channel, you know that Crocoblock is the one company that creates plugins that I always, always recommend, at least at the time of recording this video, because hey, you never know what happens. Now, I've been using Crocoblock for a while and I really love what they've been doing with their products. So Jetrix is actually very cheap. You can get it for $19.19, so it's very cheap. Now, I know it's not free, and if you know a free plugin that does the same thing, please let me know in the comments, but I have the lifetime license for Crocoblock, so I might as well use it, and I know many of you guys already have the license, but if you just want to use Jetrix, it's going to be $19, so how sweet is that? Okay, let's get started. So within the WordPress dashboard, you want to go to plugins, add new, and you want to add the Jetrix plugin now, i've already added it and then once you've done that you want to go to crocoblock jet plugin settings and you will land here and next you need to click on the widgets and extensions tab now you don't need to do this but if you don't want to use all of this because jetrix comes with hotspots parallax sticky column and so on so you can just activate or deactivate what you need now for the sake of this video i'm not going to do all of it but usually before i release a website i'll make sure i turn off everything i mean anything i don't use so that the website is not bloated okay once you've done that we can start working on the pages i've already made the block so that the tutorial goes faster but as you can see here that's what we saw in the demo uh i mean the, in the intro of this video because the first text is really long so here i've used um the testimonial widget so this is the widget that comes with elementor uh, or Elementor Pro, but that's the, um, that's the widget from Elementor. So the image is at the bottom and I didn't find a way to put the image on top because here it says stop, but the image is on top of the name and uh, the other text elements. But the main text is above, which is not something I want. And especially in this case, the text doesn't have the same length. So it's impossible to make it look exactly the same unless you have exactly the exact number of words and even characters uh, going into this. But it's going to be hard if you want to uh, create a testimonials page. You're going to get the testimonials and there's no way people are going to say exactly uh, things that will match the exact, exact number of words. So you need to play around with it, tweak it so it more or less looks the same. But that's really cumbersome and tiresome. So... I tried something else. So the next step is I used various elements. So this is an image and here below I have a heading. So I just went to the widgets icon here and I dragged a heading and then I started styling it. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to spend time on this. This is not what you're here for. So as you can see, it's better. If you look at this, that's completely messed up. This at least we have the images on top, then we have the name, then we have the city. And then we have the messy text, but at least it looks way, way better, but still not good enough in my opinion. That's way too long. So if you want to uh, read this when you're on a mobile, I mean, that's way too long. Look at this. Who's going to read that? Okay, so that was the second attempt and it's better, but not perfect. So that's the third attempt. So what I did, I used Jetrix. So basically, when you go to the bottom uh, here of the widgets, you have the unfold widget. And all I did is drag a widget here, which is what you see on screen right now. So let me go back. And basically, this is how it comes uh, by default. And by default, it's already very nice. So 
I tried with uh, various text, so let me show you. And when I click on this, so we still have a different length, but at least when people load the page, it looks way cleaner. I don't know what you think. It looks way cleaner, but it can still look better in my opinion. Like for example here, there's too many vertical spacing between the picture, the title, the city. I also want to style the button. So first of all, let me show you. If I go here, I click on the title and I go to advanced, I can see that there's a top margin of 20. But even if I removed the top margin, there's no way I can get closer to the image. And let me do the same thing for this title here. If I put a zero margin and a zero padding, it doesn't change anything, which is not something I want. I want to be able to completely control the vertical spacing. So the little tip here is to just click on the column and then where it says widget space, input zero. Because by default, it's gonna take a 20 pixel vertical uh, spacing and even horizontal spacing, but by default it's 20 pixels. So you need to tell the column, no, I want zero spacing. And as you can see here, now the spacing is actually way too uh, close. I mean, it's, it's zero. So now we need to start styling it. So what did I do? Command Z, okay. So let me select this, then I can go here, put 20 on top, 20 at the bottom if I want it. And actually, <laughs> what's going on today? So you get the idea. Same thing for the second one. I can put 20 pixels at the bottom, for example. But yeah, you get the idea. So for the title, actually, let me just put five. Okay, that's better. Then I want to start styling the unfold widget. This is what you came here for. So I click on edit unfold. Okay, so first of all, the first tab we have here within content is the container. So this is the folded state, which is what you see on screen right now. I can click here on the background type and then if I wanted, I could pick a color and that looks really ugly, but you get the ID. I could use a gradient also, but I don't want to do that. Or I could use an image if I want it in the background. But why do, would you want to do that? Maybe in the unfold state. Okay, next you can add a border. And then if you're familiar with uh, Elementor, then it's pretty self-explanatory. So the padding, as you can see, we also have the margins. You can add some border radius if you have a background color so that it looks rounded. But we're not going to do that. What I'm interested in is the separator. Why? Let me show you. So first of all, I'm going to click on uh, background type and I'm going to select a gradient. So the first color, I'm going to pick any color and I'm going to make it totally transparent. Okay, and the second color, I'm going to use the same color I have in the background. Here, the background is white. So, I mean, the background of the block is white. So I'm going to use the white color. And as you can see now, it's faded. And why is this important? Well, just because if you don't use this, so let me show you. If you don't use this, well, you may think, if you don't read the um, what's on the button, you may think this is all there is to it and maybe the, the button is going to lead you to another page or something. But when you, when you use this, it kind of hints that there is more content and you're not going to go to uh, another page. So now you can click and then you get all the content, but it's a visual clue uh, of what's going to happen which is quite important in terms of UI and UX. Okay, so of course, if you have a background of a different color, you're gonna have to adapt the gradient, but you get the idea. Next, we have the content and we can change the color uh, in the folder state. So once again, I can change the color here. I'm gonna do that now. And in the unfolded state, I could change it also, as you can see here. Okay, next we can style the, the button. So I could change the color or I can make it totally transparent and then I can use uh, a different color for the text. I can add a border. So let me add a one pixel border. And as you can see, I can really style it the way I want. Now, to make this tutorial faster, I went ahead and I styled each and every block with the content and it looks way better in my opinion i don't know what you think so basically i changed the font size make made sure the vertical spacing is right and changed the button to my liking i also took care of the responsive side of things and made sure it looks good 
on the tablet, as you can see here, as well as on the mobile. And finally, I styled the whole page as if it was a real project, just to show you how we went from this to this, and finally this. And as you can see, it's way cleaner. So if I click on show more, the text is still as long as before, but it looks way cleaner. So now I open everything, but at least the whole thing is really neatly organized. And once again, when you close everything and you land on this page, it looks clean. Now, when everything is collapsed, it looks way cleaner. And if you don't want to read a one kilometer testimonial, you don't have to. And if you're on the mobile, like I'm going to show you in a moment, it's way cleaner and easier. So you don't have to scroll through during five minutes just to find the information you may not want to read. You can just quickly scroll through and decide whether you want to show more or not. And then it's very easy to go back to the top. So a better experience. So if you want to get the Jetrix plugin, I've put a link in the description below. This is an affiliate link, so it means that I do get a commission if you purchase after clicking on one of my links. But I only recommend stuff I love and use and could recommend to my friends. And it gives me a commission, which in turn helps me keep on creating free content on this channel. Now, as I mentioned before, I think that the CrocoBlock suite is absolutely stunning. And if you're serious about web design with WordPress and Elementor, I cannot stress how much I recommend this tool. And by the way, if you want to know the best tools I recommend for creating websites with WordPress and specifically with Elementor and Elementor Pro, make sure you watch the video that's appearing on screen right now. I'm sure it's going to help you because there are so many plugins, it's hard to make a decision. Sometimes it's really a tough choice. So I'll see you in the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success.